What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Monoposto Driver Career Mode and today we are here for round 6 of the 2026 Formula 1 season taking place at none other than the magnificent Monaco Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Spanish Grand Prix then be sure to go and check that one out. That was a very interesting Grand Prix with mixed weather once again and I'm going to spoil it now. I took my second pole of the year. It was a quite a tough race for us actually. The Aston Martins were very quick, particularly Lance Stroll who secured his first ever career victory. Fernando Alonso also fought back from a disappointing qualifying to finish third, meaning he is still the comfortable championship leader heading into this race. And also a shout out to Leclerc for getting a fantastic P2 for Ferrari. We ended up P4 in the end. Another very solid race, but to be honest, we need to be kind of just about trying to get onto the podium a little bit more in some of these races if we are going to be featuring in the outcome of this championship. We need to make sure we outscore Aston Martin here today. So without further ado, let's see how qualifying went. So as you can see by the screen in the background, qualifying was intermediate conditions and that threw the grid into chaos with some very unpredictable results. And it turns out Pierre Gasly, the defending world champion, has come out on top for McLaren. What a brilliant lap it was from him. Ocon P2. Mick Schumacher up in P3 and Ferrari, myself in P4, so it's a very solid qualifying for the team. Fernando Alonso in P5 though, right up there. But what about this? Lance Stroll only in P21. He brought out the red flags in Q1 when he crashed at Rascas. He locked up and went straight on. The Audi slightly further down the order as well. And also Guan Yu Zhou up in P6 in the Alfa Romeo Penske. You know, the likes of Sonoda, Russell qualifying way down the order. There were some really unpredictable results. The Mercedes had a terrible weekend so far. And in the end, it was Deruvula who picked up the wooden spoon in qualifying in P22. So, you know, Piastri P7. There were some really interesting results from that qualifying. It was a really entertaining session. Um, but as you guys are aware, this is the first ever 35% race we are doing on Monoposto. And we are revving up to five red lights for the Monaco Grand Prix. Lights are out and we are underway. It's a decent start for Gasly from pole position. Pretty normal start for me to be honest as well. Mick Schumacher on my right hand side as we go through Saint Devot. Yes, I almost forgot that for a second. And now it's Felipe Drogovic who's come out of nowhere. And then Teo Porcher as well. They were, I think they were at the lower end of the top 10. So an electric start for the Alfa Romeo Penske and the Haas. Meanwhile, I've not had a bad start. It's just other people around me have been electric off the line. Also, Fernando Alonso has been caught out. He's dropped two places. We're going to try and go around the outside of Port Cher now. At the Lowe's hairpin, though. Easy does it. Of course, it's full wet conditions to start the race. So, in Monaco, with, you know, full wet tyres when there's now reduced grip on the circuit, this is going to be so difficult. Such a difficult race. For, the rain is forecast for most of the Grand Prix, although it might dry up later on in the race. So, Paul Chair has actually gone for a dive bomb and he's crashed. Oh my word, I'm just I was totally distracted there. The French driver came on my left hand side and he went for the move at the chicane. Novel chicane, really, really risky move there. And unfortunately, he paid for it. He locked up and went straight on. My god. As now Felipe Drogovic has just moved in the break zone at Mirabeau. I've set a purple sector one. We're now onto lap four. And if you look at the minimap and the timing sheets, Gasly and Ocon are developing a bit of a gap out front. So I do need to try and make sure I overtake the Brazilian driver as quickly as possible. And after starting lap five, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Not hanging around anymore. Purple in sector three as well. Up the inside of turn one. And I've now taken back P4 in the Monaco Grand Prix. Moving on all the way to lap 11. And I've got Mick Schumacher in the crosshairs. And I have heard the radio message that it is about to dry up. You can see some of the guys at the back who are falling behind already going on to Inters. So the crossover time is now. So yeah, I said the rain was forecast to finish near the end of the race. It turns out that's come sooner than expected. And my game is really, really lagging. And I don't know why. And that's making it really difficult to drive. Unfortunately, I couldn't record the entire race. I didn't quite have enough storage to record an entire 35% race. So I recorded soon. most of it. Um, but just when it has to save the recording in the background of me playing the game does generate a lot of lag. I have noticed that in the past. But meanwhile, we are now coming into the pits for the hard tyres. Because you may or may not over have overheard, but it said the rain will finish soon. So what's the point of going straight to Inters? I'm just going straight to the dry compound tyres and the hards. We've got 15 laps to go. The hard should be able to get to the end. So this now potentially 
could put me in a really good position in terms of winning this race. Although, the tyres are stone cold because technically on this lap it is possibly still the track surface a little bit damp. Maybe still slightly better on Inters as, you know, Mick Schumacher makes easy work of me there. I'm just really, really struggling for grip on this out lap. You can see the gaps just building up to the guys at the front of the race as well. Gasly and Ocon though, don't forget, they've gone on to intermediate tyres. So they are going to need to be pitting again at this lap. And now, by the time we start lap 13, I am indeed in P1. But Felipe Drogovic, out of nowhere, on the soft tyres, has just flown past me up the hill and taken the lead of the race down onto the casino section. And here comes Oscar Piastri all the way around the outside. That's a brilliant move from the Chrome McLaren there. Piastri then takes P2 away from me immediately. And now I'm trying to defend because I've got Pierre Gasly behind me, the pole man, who's currently holding the fastest lap of the race as well as we now watch a quick time lapse and I've decided, you know what, I'm going to play the team game today. Looking at the gaps on the left hand side, it's a really, really close grid. I'm going to try and hold Gasly up for as long as I can, or maybe not. The French driver goes all the way around the outside. Wow, that was amazing into the swimming pool section. I'm now going to pick up DRS though, and this is really where this battle begins. The battle that you definitely came to watch this race for. Drogovic has set the fastest lap of the race up into ERS. I forgot to activate DRS, but it doesn't matter. We're going to sail straight back up the inside of Pierre Gasly, and we're going to try and hold him up because Ocon is now in P5. And if I can get Ocon to overtake Gasly, then from the Constructors' Championship point of view, we are going to score a lot more points than we would do. And then I might even let Ocon go to see if he can chase after Piastri and Drogovic to win this race. Because don't forget, we've got a super quick car, better than a lot better than the Haas, and certainly better than the McLaren, although they just managed to get the most out of their car in the full wet conditions. So this is going to be a really interesting end to this race as I try and turn myself into the British Minister of Defence. And that's worked because Ocon there has gone up the inside. I didn't really intend for that to happen. But now my plan has worked. I'm just going to try and hold Gasly up a little bit longer though so Ocon can try and build out a gap. But this is ultimate team game that I am playing here. You know, Alpine, what are you doing? You owe me one there. But again, Gasly just gets phenomenal traction off the exit of the Novel chicane and manages to go around the outside. Almost for a full lap, this battle's just been going on. Once again though, I'll wait and pick up the DRS and then see if I can overtake the Frenchman, the defending world champion, down the start-finish straight. Here we go, DRS, ERS, Gasly using some battery as well, but it's not going to make any difference for him whatsoever as I once again just re-overtake him, simply just like a game of cat and mouse. Oh, this is just, to be honest, this is about 700 IQ race strategy from me here. This is just absolutely brilliant. Allowing Ocon to pull out a gap, look at it, you can see Gasly goes around the outside, but Ocon's already over two seconds clear and he's well on the way to catching up to Oscar Piastri and Felipe Drogovic. So this has really worked in my favour. Drogovic though, can we just take a minute to appreciate that a Repsol Haas is leading the Monaco Grand Prix. Piastri is in second place. Oh, what a podium that would be. Lance Stroll is currently only in 18th place. He is on the softs, but it looks like he's struggling to make his way through the traffic. Alonso in P6. So as it stands, we are going to be scoring significantly more points than Aston Martin. I used a bit of extra battery off the exit there to try and stop Gasly from going around the outside, and that has worked. And we are going to keep the position until massive error off camera. I knew that would happen the moment I had to stop recording to save storage, to save the race effectively. What happened? I spun under pressure from Gasly behind and I've got significant damage because it's what happened when, you know, I try and do a flick spin and block the track and cars don't stop and they just ram into me to give me extra floor damage. So now I've got to pit and my race plan has gone out the window. So I'm going onto a set of soft tyres and I'm just so cross with myself at this point because you can see Gasly's been unleashed to catch Ocon but also I've got a mountain to climb now with nine laps to go. To be fair, because it's a 35% race, that's still not the end of the world. That's still a third of the Grand Prix remaining. And it's a fairly close grid at the moment. You can see now I've caught up to Jake Hughes in the Williams up in P13. That's not a bad race for them at all considering where they've been this season. Although I'm not hanging around straight up the inside now. My tyres have warmed up. But look at that. 1.2 seconds quicker in the first sector. Soft tyres, clean air. That's the pace I've got around Monaco, of course. I am the defending master of Monaco. Although Nick De Vries, fair play, that's a phenomenal move to be able to hold it round the outside of the Novel Chicane. Excellent defensive work from the Dutch driver in the Ford Performance car. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to sit behind him until we get on the pit straight. Or maybe not. Who knows? I might be able to just about get enough here to go all the way round the outside of Raskas. Yes, I do. Oh, that's a fantastic move. 
That's one of my best overtakes of the race for sure. Fastest lap, 1.7 seconds quicker, 107.4. And now up the inside of Charles Leclerc in his home race. Oh, that's another really nice move there on Casino. I tell you what, this is just going to turn into an overtaking montage again with Yuki Tsunoda now. This is on lap number 21. Oscar Piastri's taking the lead of the race. Ocon's in second. I believe that Felipe Drogovic has pitted as I then go all the way around the outside of Sonoda. That's another really good move. Drogovic has indeed pitted. I'm up into P7. Joe and Fernando Alonso, crucially, is now pitted. I'm going up the inside of Mick Schumacher. To say this is just me really trying to carve my way back through the field, determined to make up for lost ground. Now up into P6 on lap 22. Drogovic has managed to get himself back up into P2 ahead of Piastri. Gasly's now leading. And as I overtake Dennis Hauger, who is high flying for Ford, I'm now back into the top five with the fastest lap. So I'm effectively almost back to where I was before I spun. Moving on to lap 25, though, and I'm catching up to Pierre Gasly, who has fallen right off the behind the leaders. Ocon is now leading with two laps to go, and Gasly pits. So I don't know if they were all fighting and Gasly must have got damaged because Ocon all of a sudden leaves. Drogovic is P2 and Piastri P3. And I'm back into P4, which is exactly where I was before I crashed. Alex Albon is now getting lapped so although I've got scintillating pace it's just too little too late because obviously you know I spun and crashed I'm still showing the same pace I had when I was master of Monaco last year driving the Mercedes although speaking of master of Monaco this year that prize is going to go to Esteban Ocon my teammate has driven really well today I'm sure he's partly got me to thank for this victory yeah. as he wins for the second time this season Ocon is your master of Monaco in 2026 and with that win he has thrown himself right back into contention in the championship only five points off the lead now and back up into P2 that was a determined drive from Esteban to recover because he didn't have it all his own way let's see what he has to say on the radio and that's the check of yes guys yes <laughs> yes well Oh my god! <laughs> Woo! Okay, scenario 12, please, mate. Scenario 12. So congrats to my teammate and the whole team for pulling off the victory in Monaco and Ocon also steals my fastest lap on the final lap. Felipe Drogovic though, P2 in the Haas, fantastic performance from him and the same for Piastri to get P3 in the McLaren although I come across the line, a great recovery in the end with P4 and that is my third successive fourth place finish it's consistent points but i do just need to be finishing a little bit higher up if i want to be getting closer to the lead of the championship alonso p5 on the road but crucially he picked up a five second penalty so that will drop him down behind lando norris into p6 gasly only ended up p8 in the end what a disappointing race it was for him mick schumacher down in p10 after starting third hauger finally gets some points on the board for ford performance and it was a dreadful day for the likes of Albon, Sergeant Porcher, or lapped Carlos Sainz way down there as well. But that's it for the Monaco Grand Prix, and that was the first ever 35% race on Monoposto. Let me know if you liked it, what did you think? Because to be honest, as a race distance, I actually preferred it. It was a bit longer, although it's not too long that it's kind of like a 50% race, because they are really quite time consuming and to edit as well. The only downside is obviously I can't quite record the full race and today, well, I missed a crucial piece of footage in my spin, but let me know if it's something that you want to see in the future, whether you prefer longer races. Don't forget, we have still got two more of these for you to decide this season. We've got round 11 at the Belgian Grand Prix, which is a 35% race, and also the penultimate race of the year, which is taking place in Qatar, which is also going to be a 35% race. So... It's just a few more tests to see effectively if we like it, if it's something that we could look to take forward into the future, maybe next season. Um, so yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's the final standings from the Monaco Grand Prix. Very entertaining one in the end. Stroll only recovered to P14. So with that, I think we are back in the lead of the Constructors' Championship, which is great news. It's still getting fairly close in the Drivers' Championship as well, though we're third, but we're only 14 points behind Alonso now, so we're slowly reeling him in. We just need to keep this consistency going. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and join my Discord server. Both links are in the description below, and I'll see you guys all next time in Baku. Goodbye. <laughs>